Hello and welcome to Deep Dive with me, Mitali Mukherjee. It's a, a space that is always in the midst of a storm of some kind of the other. And this time there seems to be tumult again in the world of Indian cricket. A slew of WhatsApp messages purportedly sent by a journalist to Rutiman Saha, a cricket player, is the cause for the sto storm. Saha, of course, is the Bengal wicketkeeper who was not picked in Team India for the Test Series against Sri Lanka. Saha went on to tweet screenshots of messages from that journalist who appeared to be demanding an exclusive interview. Texts included lines like, and I quote, choose whoever can help the most. Again, in quotes, you did not call. Never again will I interview you. I don't take insults kindly. I will remember this, end of quote. When Saha came public with all this information, there was a surge of support from many um, fellow cricketers, former cricketers, uh, Ravi Shastri as well came out and tweeted in support. Reports now indicate that the BCCI will ask the cricketer to reveal that unnamed person's identity uh, before deciding on the next course of action. Of course, the bigger question is, what does this incident point to in terms of what looks like a very complicated media and cricketer relationship? Where does the BCCI fit into all of this? Because Ridhiman Saha had some other observations to make about sort of Ganguly and his communication with him. And what are the big lessons to draw in terms of what looks like an increasingly political and politicized situation when what they should be focusing on, on both sides, the journalists and the players, is sport. Joining me to talk about that is a veteran from the space, Sharda Ugra. She's a noted commentator. She's a writer, sports journalist of many decades. Shada, thank you so much for joining in. Uh, it, it is always a pleasure speaking with you because there is so much you bring to the conversation around sport and the, and the many problems with it, frankly. But let me start with a slightly naive question, perhaps. Are you surprised with the events as they have un unfolded around this whole WhatsApp controversy? Uh, hi, Mitali. Uh, no, I'm not surround. Uh, I'm not surprised uh, that it's had to come to this pass. Uh, I'm just uh, I'm surprised in a way at the tone in which the cricketer was addressed, in which the Saha was spoken to. Uh, I'm not surprised that there's been this sort of schism almost with the journalists are like this and, and players are very angry with them. Uh, but uh, uh, because it's been building for a while, I think and and but that it would be manifested in this way in which uh, uh, someone representing the media, someone on the side of media, uh, ends up talking to uh, 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 anybody. It, it doesn't, everyone say, oh, he's a test player. It doesn't matter. You don't speak to any athlete that you're, is in your line of work. You don't speak to anybody, frankly, uh, like you are the mafia. You know, so this is like, I, you, it will not be forgotten and whatever, whatever. So I think it's the tone in which it, it, it uh, uh, surprised me. You, you do have athletes that get, get angry with what you say or write or do, and you do get angry messages. But the tone in which is what I was a, a little bit, uh, I mean, I, I shouldn't say I'm surprised. I'm, I'm, I'm surprised that it turned up actually in, in, uh, in a way. I'm surprised that that tone is the one that was presented out there. Um, I know I'm sounding a little bit muddled, but uh, no, yeah. no, 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 no. And I wanted to ask: Is it a common occurrence for sport or cricket uh, specifically, Shada? Because as a, a business journalist, I know I certainly can't send angry messages to anyone. I'm not sure political journalists can. I don't know if it works differently for film journalism. But uh, is this something that that kind of has become uh, a little bit of a trend or a norm in in, in sports? No, 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 no. No, no, honestly, it had not become a trend. Uh, I have to say that the the, the term that Ridhiman Saha used as journalist, noted journalist, it's a bit loose. It's uh, This is not a journalist that is being referred to. That's a journalist, like a professional career journalist. This is not that person. Uh, so uh, uh, um, they they may have presented themselves as, as journalists, but uh, whether they were journalists in the sense that journalism is supposed to be, definitely not. And uh, uh, no one uh, in, in uh, no career journalist ever said, nasty messages of this kind uh, to to an athlete uh, in a in a threatening manner i mean somebody didn't return your phone call that's our life story people don't return our phone calls i mean you know that you know it yourself we spend our lives waiting for sms response for i'm waiting for somebody to reply to my sms messages for three weeks now it's not coming but i'm still trying so um uh, it, it it's not it's not a pattern at all uh, i think it's a certain manifestation of what uh, uh, being in the media represented 
has begun to represent to certain people, you know, to certain individuals, that you are not just a, rep a representative of the media, you become a brand manager of sorts, and then you pick the, the person whose brand you believe you can enhance and therefore convince them of this. And uh, I'm again, I'm saying here that in this case, uh, the individual being spoken of, I mean, uh, players have been interacting with uh, the person like it was absolutely a normal thing to do. Uh, access was never shut off or cut off from, uh, uh, from, from this person. So I don't see that the cricketers themselves are in any way completely innocent or uh, victims of this thing and oh this is so terrible i mean they they, they are party to yeah. uh, uh, creating this uh, this 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 kind of you know the the media professional come brand manager come uh, you know a host of many other uh, uh, media platforms or whatever so it's 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 part of that there are, there are not too many people that are there in it but then that's why we know who it is <laughs> We do. I'm not sure. Are we, are we allowed to say who it is? Or uh, <laughs> uh, I'm not sure how we walk around that one. But, you know, another journalist pointed out, uh, Shada, that how come Riddhi didn't mind naming Saurav and Rahul, but he didn't name this person, you know, just picking up from where you, you left off. Uh, yeah. I, why, why didn't he come public with that name? I mean, I can't read Ridhiman Sa's mind. Uh, yeah. uh, the only thing is that the, the reason why all these things happened is that he was in an extremely uh, uh, emotional state. You know, he was very upset uh, and he was just firing off on his on, on his phone. And uh, he said, look, you know, people that are there in power, who that are there in, in decision making capacity, this is what was said to me by one and another. And uh, that's why he did. And now everyone has said, oh, these are private conversations and whatever. You know, I mean, please, journalists, we're very happy when people tell us about their private conversations, about players and so on, if you, if you want to know. We're perfectly happy when it happens. Uh, the fact that he said it, uh, it's, not a, it, it it's not a crime for any uh, to talk about it. I don't think it is. A, it's a, I don't think it's a lapse of any kind of, um, uh, you know, uh, maybe it's on his contract. I don't know. Uh, so, but I don't think it's a, it's a lapse in any way. It's an, a player has been dropped. People are asking him what happened. He's saying, look, I was told this by one person and this by another person. He yeah. could have said, I was told I, not taking the names, but again, everyone would have known who they are. And to be fair, uh, Saurabh Ganguly, I don't know. Someone told me he's in the, U, the UK at the moment. I don't know whether he's, he will respond to this in, in, uh, because someone will reach him. Raul Ravid responded to it in a way that we saw at the press conference. So, um, you know, so it's, it's, it's a normal thing. It happens. This has happened through selections, particularly, and, and, and players being upset about selections. I mean, Mohinder Amanath said selectors are a bunch of jokers, a great legendary quote that has lasted through decades. So this happens all the time. It's not new. I think only in, in, a, in an age where media, uh, where access to cricketers is uh, now gate, uh, there are gatekeepers, there are very strict gatekeepers that are there. Uh, that you have this happening, you know. Mm. You know, Shada, also, when this controversy broke, there were many sports persons or cricketers, I should say, who came forward to support uh, Riti. There was Harbhajan Singh, there was Virinder Sevak saying, Gehri Saas Le or Bol Dal, there was Ravi Shastri. Uh, but the, the entire controversy has sort of had a very sharp incline and then gone nowhere. Um, do you think it's fizzled out uh, or do you think this this one can't be ignored. They're going to have to take some action. They're going to have to step up and talk about it, the BCCI specifically. I think they'll get asked about it. It'll be talked about. And I think the, the what will happen is there'll be an escalation of stupidity when it comes to rules about how to deal with the media, right? They'll be said, no creators can talk to any journalist. You know, no players can do anything for the whole, like for the whole lives, as long as they are uh, contracted to us, whether there's a series, whether there's a not series, we own your voice and we own your time uh, with the media, we control it. That that seems to be the only thing. But, you know, uh, for a long time, and it said so in all the Loda recommendations and so on, you need to also uh, pass strictures and rulings about how player managers and player agents are uh, uh, how you how you certify them uh, yeah. who works with whom uh, so that kind of that kind of uh, uh, you know sort of uh, whitewashing of the fact that there is this um, double kind of uh, that take place 
uh, where uh, uh, players work for uh, in in companies, their managers are managing other players, and you know it's it, 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 it's happened with captains all the time. So uh, and this is I'm talking from Azharuddin's uh, time. So you're going back uh, thirty years. So there's been no regulation or no seriousness about that. What is they going to be about this? They'll just say don't talk to anybody, which they're not doing anyway. You know. And um, that's what's that's I think that's the way it's going to go, and they'll try, they'll hope that it dies down quietly. Um, the person concerned, whose name is not being taken for whatever reason, I mean, everybody knows that uh, they did business with him in that sense. It 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 also marks, I think, Mitali, a change uh, in the way the media organizations believe that their reporters should be in uh, 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 with reference to sort of big name celebrities, right? So. Um, your company will not want you writing badly about a player or a film star or whatever because they want that person to turn up at their annual think tank or whatever their thought fest or whatever it's called. So there's that has also happened. So this is just this is just another sort of byproduct of that, and it happened to be Saha, uh, who's had a uh, who's had a who's had a, a tough career because he's spent his time competing with. Uh, wicketkeeper batsman of real high quality in that sense and 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 his own skills as a wicketkeeper specialist wicketkeeper are almost uh, um sort of sidelined because of the fact that the other two or the other two generations as dhoni and rishabh pant are completely uh, different kind of uh, wicketkeeper so it's it's sad that it's happened and no one should speak to and no sports journalist no journalist should speak to anybody in that tone of voice uh, which is almost like i can make and break your career and You'd better you'd better uh, uh, behave, kind of. You you'd better answer my phone or some nonsense like that. You know, you know two two things happened over here, Shada. One was this uh, journalist in quotes who sent threatening messages saying, you know, you know, now now you've had it. But the other uh, strange part of what Riddhi had to say was when he talked about Ganguly's support. Assurance of selection to him, you know, saying Dada congratulated me on WhatsApp. He said I don't need to worry. Uh, what is sort of Ganguly doing, sending these kind of WhatsApp messages to players? I mean, the sort of Ganguly, uh, uh, in terms of uh, who he has been, has been sort of he's he's seen as as being this kind of uh, uh, his management style is making people feel. Uh, reassured and feeling fine. It's, it doesn't matter what the facts might be, but he says, "Listen, listen, it's okay. Relax. Things are going to be fine." You know, that's the way. That's the way he works. Now, the thing is, he's president of, uh, and that's the way his captaincy was successful as well. You know, that don't worry, we'll sort it out. We'll sort out the problem. Um, and and uh, he happens to be the president of the BCCI, so which makes it a bit difficult and murky. And you know, what are you doing? Why is the president telling someone he can he can be uh, uh, his his uh, his um, uh selection is is assured i i don't for a minute disbelieve riddhiman saha when he says that he was told this by saurav ganguly and i do i will not for a minute disbelieve saurav ganguly said yeah but i didn't mean it you know i didn't mean it in full i was just trying to make him feel better you know so so um or he'll come and say i didn't say it i don't know why he where he got that from i was just i said something else it was so there is that there is that test this is the second time it's happened mind you the first thing is with virat kohli yeah. uh, when he said i'm going to uh, that ganguly told me uh, he had a conversation that ganguly said i had a conversation with him and virat kohli said no he didn't so this is the second time it's happened um could uh, 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 in terms of sort of propriety and in terms of uh, protocol this thing things shouldn't be done yeah uh, you are the president of the bcci uh, whatever it is but uh, this is indian cricket things beyond propriety and uh, 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 sort of uh, um, what is what is good uh, what good, what is good professionalism it doesn't happen um, you know so it's it's uh, it's it's not surprising it's a bit it's like massively messy but it's happened it's like it's happened again you know kohli and and, and saha in a different way it's happened again um so where does that leave soranga aguli as the bcci president i mean he, he neither he nor the secretary should be in that office anyway so i don't know what we're talking about but uh, you don't subscribe to the view shada that this is sort of you know this shone a light on the increasingly politicized nature of the team i mean not that it hasn't been politicized in the past but the fact that this bcci versus coach uh, friction or tension has has really I don't think it's PCCI versus coach friction. I think uh, uh, with Ganguly and Dravid, they've known each other for uh, at least now. I'm thinking, yeah, thirty years again, more than thirty years. I'm sure uh, they understand each other well, and I think uh, Dravid's uh, 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 sort of his 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 appointment as coach 
came with Ganguly's uh, absolute full approval and blessing. And he knows that uh, he trusts Ra Dravid to do the right thing. I don't think it's that level of, you know, machinations that, that are there because they have a different equation from before. Uh, we must remember that the last time something like this had also happened had to do with uh, uh, Anil Kumble's being coach and Kohli was the captain. And there, there was a genuine uh, uh, non whatever uh, thing that happened. Then you go back some time and then you have Mohinder Ramanath wanted to drop uh, Dhoni as captain uh, when he was in the selection committee and the, the president said no. You know, so this kind of thing has turned up again. I don't think this is a friction between the two of them. I think this is just Ganguly being Ganguly and, and, and David being David, you know, honestly. Yeah. And what did you make of how Dravid dealt with the entire situation and how he took on the question um, and, and, and answered it? I mean, he's good. This is He's done this for a long time. He knows how things work in, in Indian cricket. And, and, and you can literally ask him any question. That's the good thing about, uh, a particular, including Anguli, I must have to say, that uh, there's a bunch of players whom you can ask them any question virtually and they will stand up and give you an answer. And they won't be like, like uh, it was really amusing that Rohit Sharma said that Virat Kohli will be fine if you don't, if you just don't talk about him. You know, he said something of that nature uh, that, uh, you know, you guys are always talking about him. He's going to be fine. Just talk, you know. And you want to say, yeah, but Virat Kohli is a person that has been talked about all the time for the last five years in Indian cricket. He has been Mr. Cricket. You know, there's been nobody, the, there's a cartoon, there's a superhero character after him. What are you saying we don't talk about him or pay attention to his? He's our prime number one. Uh, uh, he was our primary, is, was our primary number one uh, all format cricketer. So why, why should we not talk about him? So in that sense, I think um, Dravid is used to a different and I think a far more uh, thorough kind of a questioning. He's gone through a lot uh, in his career as a, as a captain and as a, as a, as a player. Um, he's been at a time when he's he's played cricket at a time where uh, press conferences were not held online and you would be able to ask him questions to his face and there was no media manager as well to kind of uh, shelter the questions and, and, and so on. So he'll, he'll be fine with it. Uh, I think Ganguly is well versed with how to deal with uh, the media. He has no you know, qualms about uh, when he wants to speak, he'll speak. Uh, that's, that's for sure. But I just think what the sad thing that will happen is for a lot of the younger reporters that are there who've seen their access cut off. Um, and they don't want to know what you had for breakfast. They want to know something else about your game. I feel I feel bad for them because they are uh, growing, coming into cricket journalism at a time where there is this hostility almost. There is this distance that's been put um, between reporters and, and, and players. And I mean, eventually it's a sport they're writing about and, and uh, there are good things to write about it as well. But they're being, uh, what's happening with journalists is that they're being told no. Uh, we will be everything we want to be on Instagram and on social media. So, Will it keep rolling on in this uh, opaque fashion for the BCCI as well, Shada? I mean, for the journalist who shall not be named, uh, it seems that uh, connections <laughs> with BCCI have been all the way back since the Jagmohan Dalmia days. You know, this, this, this particular person has been a constant sort of, um, he's had constant access to players, to the committee. Uh, and it almost seems like nothing has changed. The BCC has just been in the same sort of uh, funk uh, up until now. Where, <laughs> as you said, there are question marks on the current, uh, you know, heads. Yeah. Uh, see, the, the whole thing is that the, the, the BCCI has taken away powers from of, of professional management from its managers that were there, you know, whose job it was to look after all this stuff, to look after PR goof ups and things like that. Uh, it's now just two, three people that are running it, which is the way they want. They don't want there to be some, like, why should we not be in the news? Why should our photographs not be there? So it's that kind of uh, uh, sort of philosophy that's still functioning. And uh, as to the person I'm not going to, uh, who, he who shall not be named, uh, I, uh, I mean, there are sort of parallel histories that have happened with reference to other sports and other sports administrators as well. That's their, that's their business and how they uh, work with it. Um, I think it will continue in a way. There'll be a little bit of knuckles will be wrapped, but people with connections have connections that open doors everywhere. So you never know what door can open and how things can turn up and people forget very quickly. So, um, you know, I don't think uh, uh, Rohit Sharma would have been sent a message like this. I don't think Virat Kohli would have been sent a message like this. And I must point out, I don't think any woman reporter would have sent a message like this yeah. to any athlete, never mind a, 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 a cricket player. And I think we have to say that. Um, so so uh, someone told me this yesterday and she said, listen, it's just a boys club. I said, yeah, but do you want a story like this? Is this the kind of access that you want? You know, uh, uh, is that the way you want to actually? She said, yeah, no, not really. That's not the stuff you want to write. So uh, that's the kind of thing that it'll be. And I think it'll, it won't serve Indian cricket well 
because your stories are only going to be told through television you know they're only going to be told i mean even even commentators can't say what they feel about a cricketer so what is you know what is are they going to talk about this in uh, in the next commentary when it comes up in today's match in fact i doubt very much someone has put it really well and explained it to me as south asian male privilege shada which is even more <laughs> Thank which you. is even more forceful than the white male privilege because you've literally been pandered to by a woman uh, all your life mother to the wife all of it well said. <laughs> you know the the point you raised about journalism though i think is an important one and somebody when i sent you that that tweet thread he he raised some important questions the fact that you yes. need to be not just a journalist you need to you know take a cricketer's wife out shopping run some errands pull a favor here and there uh when did that start happening in in cricketing journalism uh, i have a friend in television who gets very upset when you say when, when it started when television came into it but it's not fair uh, but it did <laughs> no i mean you have to be you have to be uh, you have to be a little bit more realistic and say that there were always there was always a kind of uh, a journalistic community that existed that was about uh being close to the player therefore not being objective and and, and openly so and and being uh, pretty much a friend that way uh so that you were on their side whether you were the local reporter who who saw the boy since he was 10 years old or whether you were someone new who's just come into that kind of uh that kind of uh, sort of uh experience and you find that it helps you uh it works out in television because it gives you access to the sound bite and the camera uh, when we have to find something out we make a phone call we don't need a recording we don't need it for it to be uh um uh, you know you the only threat is let's say i was misquoted but it's fine if you you, you can manage it um so this is definitely i i would say it's accelerated through the arrival of television it's accelerated through uh, the arrival of um uh, sort of like i said uh, uh, this uh, the 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 um think fests that you have those talk fests that you put up that media organizations put up um and i think you know i mean I, i would like newspaper editors to come out and say to the bcci that listen if you're just going to do this and not give us they are not allowing photographers into matches by the way as a, they're not getting accredited photographers because their own photographers uh, can take uh, can shoot pictures and do whatever and they're saying it's covid and everywhere else in every other sport in the country is being played um you know so photographers are not being allowed so they are fully entitled to because they own the property so to speak but i think there should be a certain pushback from the media as well that uh, um, uh, so i'd say yeah it was uh, television has accelerated it and social media has made it uh, uh, amplified it enormously um because then you are able to do your youtube channel shows with these people you are able to do all the other kinds of stuff and it's just it, it's become messier and messier and messier that there is very little Mm, that you can see by the way of uh, objective uh, reporting or objective uh, analysis or objective discussion about uh, what's happening in 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 cricket because you don't want to rub uh, uh, i'm going to mix up all my metaphors you don't want to push people the wrong way uh, you don't want to uh, you don't want to uh, sort of topple the cart or whatever it is um and it's it's trying to keep that whole stick because eventually this is cricket right this is a sport it's not not a big deal it's not like nobody's going to die so um nobody's going to start something this so you think it's fine it's okay let's keep it let's keep it uh, uh, nice and easy and, and and friendly and chatty and airy but that's not what journalism is supposed to be right so but we kind of gone into this let's be a little pr outpost of of uh, um whatever it is you know of uh, a distant bcci pr outpost it's 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 okay for some people to be that um and it's it's i i i feel sorry as for the young generation of journalists today who are dealing with quite a uh, pretty bad leadership also uh because the leadership is not standing up for basically um the right to speak freely you know the right to talk the the right to write whatever whatever you think is 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 uh, accurate and objective and so on. so let me ask you this as a final question then sharda you know what would your advice then be to these two pockets to young journalists who are in a sense beholden to an organization or uh, a leader who they are accountable to and on the other hand younger cricketers who are again beholden to either a committee or a particular team um, there is you know so much that they need to navigate as well 
Yeah, that's a that's a very good question. Uh, I mean, my advice to young journalists would be to just get as much information about everything as you can. Uh, just make yourself like a sponge collecting all information from everywhere of all kinds. A great American sports writer, Robert Lipside, said, because access has been shut off, your chance now is to really, really go hard at these guys. You know, is to look for everything, uncover everything. But you can't do that in, in Indian cricket because of the fact that uh, uh, we are in this in this sort of crazy position. And he was so angry when the when the Tiger Woods scandal broke because he said, how can the golf reporters not know this was going on? What a bunch of house pets. You know, he calls them house pets. So, it's, I mean, as a, as a, a, you don't have to be a house pet. You can just be as, there are a lot of young people, journalists doing great work. But I think in, in, uh, in cricket is particularly tough uh, because you have to be, uh, I think you shouldn't pick enemies too fast, too soon. Uh, but just navigate your way around it uh, smarter. Uh, cricketers actually have a terrific handbook, apparently, that was given to them uh, by the BCCI a few, three, five years ago, which told them on how to deal with the media and what to do and so on. And they, all they have to do is go and download that handbook and all the answers are there. And I'm, I'm, I'm saying it wrongly because I, I know bits of it that are there in it. So. Super. Thank you so much, Shada. It's always so great speaking with you. It's uh, it's like the bright spot of uh, what's, you know, a pretty useless week <laughs> with Ukraine and markets and everything else. But uh, I, I think there's a lot for not just young journalists in sport, but in all in in all categories to take away from what you just pointed out. Certainly. Thank you, Vitali. Great, great to chat with you again. Thanks so much. Get a sneak peek of exclusive content before everyone else for channel members only. Memberships start at Rs. 89. Hit the join button below.